Hello, everyone. Omito for. Yeah, it's my honor to share in this BBC. Um, my English is still in practicing. <laughs> uh, not so fluent, not so good. But I think it's okay if I doesn't speak well, right? Yeah. And the theme I want to share today is it's okay not to be okay. <laughs> Actually, I inspired by a Facebook post last year, posted by United Nation. It's kind of slogan, it's okay not to be okay, about the issue of mental health. So I think it's very interesting. And uh, all of us here, I think we practice Buddha Dharma for quite a few years, or many, many years. Yeah, so how do you see yourself of being a Buddhist? How do you grade yourself? A, B, C, none, <laughs> or D, you nod your head, <laughs> E, or, or, or nod your head. <laughs> so how do you judge yourself? What's the criteria to judge yourself? You get the grade. Buddhists must be very kind, very gentle all the time, very humble, not getting angry, no disappointment, is it? If you get angry, if you have emotion, we are not a good Buddhist? Or how do you judge yourself? Or facing with any situations, we have to be always very optimistic. We have to be very brave. Um, facing all the difficulties. Do you judge good Buddhists like this? Yeah, many people judge Buddhists by all these criteria. If it doesn't fulfill the criteria, we are not a good Buddhist. But all of us are an ordinary person. We are still learning. We are not a Buddha. All those criteria above, um, I think only Buddha can fulfill. Yeah. So we are all ordinary person who is learning to achieve and to attain Buddhahood. So we are imperfect in the process, actually, is very, very normal. But how we see ourselves and how we accept ourselves by being imperfect, I would like to share with you some of my little experience in daily life. Um, there was a, quite a few times I worked with someone who easily gets simple things into mess. Yeah, for an example, we did a uh, discussion um, to, to decide uh, where to put the big table. So we have a group of people discussing, and the result and is we put it on the left of the room. And these very kind people, very gentle people, very patient, she volunteered herself. Oh, I can get a group of people to do it. So we say thank you. And later on, we found that the table is not on the left. And it is not on the right. It was outside the building. <laughs> so I feel like, wow, how can this happen? This is such a simple thing. How can this make into a mess? So actually, I feel quite angry and get crazy. But I tell myself, this is not a big deal. This is just a small, small, small thing happens in daily life. So I tell myself, oh, okay, this is all the um, result of all the causes and conditions. So I have to accept it. Um, this person, she's very kind, very gentle. She doesn't mean to get trouble for us. So I try to convince myself that I don't get angry. There's no reason for me to get crazy. 
but the emotion is there. And at that time, suddenly I realized that maybe I can have another choice facing with my emotion. So I start to see my emotion as they are. I start to contemplate the anger, the frustration, and all the emotions. And I realize that all these emotions, it arise and it will dissolve. The difference is when I, when I focus on the situation, I will get angry. Maybe not only one day, one week, one month. And next time I see the person next year, I will get angry. Yeah, that's the situation where I focus on, the, on what she did. But I turn inwardly, I focus on my body and mind in present moment. I found that it's so big, big difference. When I focus on my body and mind, I can see that actually the situation already passed. It's in past. It's not in present. It's not in future. So I just live in present moment, see what I see, hear what I hear, and feel the body sensation in this present moment. So I bring myself into a calm condition. So from there, it really inspired me a lot that Usually, being a Buddhist, we don't like emotion, especially those bad emotion. We don't like it, it appears in our life. But those emotion actually is a tool which we can use it to see things as they are. Uh, there are more times that we are looking for something else uh, maybe I have to be more humble. Maybe I have to be more patient. But actually, in this present moment, I already get angry. So I don't like it. and I, I would like to deny it. But after I cannot deny it, then I will, what I will do? I will try to chase away it. Do you think we can chase away? No, it already exists. So we like to hide it and suppress it, but it will get stronger and stronger. Yeah. So I learned from that experience that uh, we just need to be aware of an emotion that arises without fighting against the fact that already exists. Yeah. Uh, and I realized that we've, when we face it, especially our emotion and all the situation in daily life, this is the fastest way to solve any problems or any difficulties. When we try to deny, we try to hide, we try to suppress, it takes us so long journey and come back to the same point. Yeah. So I think I want to learn how to um, use the fastest way to face with uh, emotion and dif difficulties in life. And uh, I realized that um, real, place, real peace in mind can only exist when we have no attempt to chase away anything. And at the same time, we, without pursuit of any perfection or ex expectation, which is we really know what already happened and we accept it wholly. It's just like when we have a rainy day, we don't force it into a sunny day. We just take an umbrella and enjoy in the rainy day. Yeah, but very often we try to turn the rainy day into sunny day, which we enjoy more. So from that experience, um, I think I learned a lot that when we live in present moment, we experience everything is just perfect. It is imperfect, it's because we are 
we are looking for something else. Our mind doesn't like to accept as uh, it is. When we really accept everything in present, the present is nothing missing. It's just perfect. Yeah, so I would like to share with this a uh, short experience about it's okay not to be okay. It's a tool for our, our practice uh, because I think Buddha teaches us to live healthy but not to live imperfect, which is um, when we live healthy, we see the real, the reality will be close to practice because be aware of our body and mind, be aware of all the situations happen is a very important practice in our, our monastic life. Thank you. <laughs>